XPath is the language used for locating nodes in XML documents. HTML is derived from XML families, so you can use XPath for HTML documents as well. One of the main reasons why we go for XPath is when you can't find suitable ID or name attribute for an element, then you should go for XPath. There are a number of XPath strategies. We'll go through them. First one is XPath Absolute. XPath Absolute is nothing but it's using the complete XPath from the root HTML tag to the specific element. It's using the whole element tag path. If you see the example, you can see HTML, body, div2, div and up to the input tag. It's using the complete path. This is not recommended to use. If the location is changed or if the element is under some other parent, then it's going to break. Going to the next one, which is XPath attributes. It's always good and recommended to use XPath attributes. XPath attributes is nothing but we are still focused on that element and we are trying to use other attributes to match. For example, if you have id equal to pass wd and there is also a, another element coming before this element with id equal to pass wd, then for the second element, you cannot use id equal to pass wd. Then along with the id, you look for other attributes of the element. If there is a placeholder with password, you can combine these two. You can say, I'm looking for an element with id pass wd along with that placeholder is password. That's what the example here. It says we are looking for input with id equal to pass wd and placeholder equal to password. You can look at the syntax. That's the syntax. It's two forward slashes, then HTML tag, then attribute one equal to value one, and so on. You can give a number of attributes. There are some special cases. You can use some special XPath functions. They are contains and starts with. If you have some part of ID or name as constant and rest is changing, then you can use XPath functions contains or starts with based on your scenarios and your application. You can see the examples here. In the first example, we are looking for a element where ID contains user. The other parts of the ID may be a prefix or postfix. They can be changing, but it always contains the word user. In the second example, we are looking for an element where name starts with word pass. After pass, it can be changing or some dynamic words, but it always starts with pass. These are really useful when you have ID or names or even you can use other attributes as well like value or placeholders. When they are not constants and some parts are changing, you can concentrate on the static part and you can use contains or starts with and you can specify conditions based on them and try to match to the elements. Let's see how XPath absolute, XPath attributes, contains and starts with how they work. I'm on SlideShare login page. I'm going to refresh this page. Now let's inspect username field. This is the input tag representing username field. If I right click and click on copy XPath, it's going to give me absolute XPath. Let me paste that here. You can see here it's starting from HTML tag, then body, div and up to the input tag. It's the complete XPath from the HTML root to the specific element. Actually, we need to give one more forward slash to make it work. If I click on find, you can see it's matching to the username field. Anyhow, XPath absolute, it's not recommended to use. If the position changes or the parent changes, it's going to break. Let's look at XPath attributes. I'm going to field set tag and click on edit. I'm giving more spacing so that we can just see 
username and password fields. Okay, we have it ready. The first one is username field and the second one is password field. If I say id equal to user password and click on find, it's going to match password field. You can see it's matching. I'm changing username field so that its id is user password. Now if I try with strategy id equal to user password, it's going to match username field because that's the first occurrence. In this case, how do you recognize or how do you identify password field? We cannot use id equal to user password. We can use name but I'm going to delete the name for now. Now we cannot use id because there is already a first occurrence and it's going to match to that one. In this case xpath attributes is really useful and best to use. With xpath attributes we will be still using that element and its attributes and try to build the locating strategy. We can say that its id is user password along with that we can look at other attributes like type, placeholder, class and we can say its id equal to user password and placeholder equal to password. Look for a element like that. Let's write the xpath. I'm writing two forward slashes then input then brackets I'm saying at id equal to user password we need to give that in quotes then I'm saying and placeholder let's take placeholder and placeholder we need to give at symbol be careful placeholder equal to the value its password we need to give that in single quotes in single quotes password let me double check two forward slashes input tag id equal to user password and placeholder equal to password within all within brackets it looks good if I click on find you can see it's matching to the password field this is how let me maximize here this is how we use xpath attributes xpath attribute is really great if the location changes or the parent changes there won't be any problems because the strategy is based on the attributes of the element so it's always going to match. Now we will be looking at contains and starts with xpath functions. Let me change the id here for example say id is some changing words and then user id and then again some changing words let me delete underscore password this is the id for the username field and let me change the name i'm adding few characters at the end let's say they are dynamic and they are going to change we are assuming that for id attribute user id is going to be static whatever prefix and postfix digits they are going to change and for name user login is going to be static and whatever letters after that they are going to change in this case what do you do in this case it's really good to use xpath contains or xpath starts with I'm going to new step I'm saying let's use contains with id I'm saying input tag and within brackets I'm saying contains and we are looking for id so at id and it's going to always contain user id now if I click on find 
you can see it's matching to username field this is really useful if you have some part of the element changing now let's look at starts with here in the name we have last three digits always changing so I can say input within brackets starts with and it's at name and it always starts with user login let me copy that and now click on find you can see it's matching to username these two functions are really helpful when you have dynamic ID or name they are not just limited to name or ID you can also use other attributes like placeholder class let's look at XPath relative now XPath relative is really useful and best to locate table cells if you go to a table web element and look at cells most of the cases you will not be able to find any attributes it will be very hard for web developers to give any attributes to all cells in this case we use XPath relative and we'll go to the parent and find a unique parent and from there build the relative XPath you can see the example here in the example here we are saying go to a table with ID its selenium course page chapter table go to the table from there we have built the relative X path go to table body third row and second cell this is how X path relative works it is trying to find a unique parent just go to top level and from there build the path to the specific element the next one is X path position it is not recommended to use this is based on the position you can see the example here we are saying in the whole web page go to the fourth div tag and go to the first anchor tag if the location changes then it's going to break let's see how these work I need to find a table first let's go to ABSoft trainings website I have got a table there we are on home page now let's go to selenium training page let me scroll down you can see here we have a table this is the chapter table let's say that we want to inspect this element and we want to write a locating strategy for this element right click and say inspect with firebug you can see that it's a cell tag there is a table tag let me maximize there is a table tag and in that table it's third row and second cell this is the cell we want to locate if you see here there is no ID or there is no name or other attributes for cells it's going to be really hard for web developers to give any attributes it's just going to be TD like that in this case how to identify this element how to write locating strategy we use XPath relative what we are going to do here is I want to build locating strategy for this element but there are no attributes go to its parent there are no attributes again go to its parent no attributes again go to its parent and this parent which is table tag has a ID which is selenium course page chapter table and we can uniquely identify this element what I can do here is from that parent I can build my locating strategy from that parent I can build XPath relative locating strategy let me right click and perform some action using selenium IDE let's go for assert text let me delete this and if you see here that's what selenium IDE has done if you look at target wrap down 
that's the XPath ID relative locating strategy. It's saying that it's looking for a table with ID selenium course page chapter table from their table body third row and second cell and it has got value to verify. If I click on find you can see it's matching and if I run asset text you can see it's passing. This is how it works with XPath relative. With XPath relative if you cannot build with that element will go up to its parents up to a level from where you can uniquely build the XPath. Now let's look at XPath position. If you see the drop down you can see there is another XPath which is XPath position. It is nothing but it's saying in the whole web page get me third row and second cell. If I click on find it is still finding. If I run that one it's passing. This is XPath position. It's just using the position and this is not recommended to use. If the position changes it's going to break. So far we have seen different XPath locating strategies. Hope this is going to be really helpful to you.